What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about Soho multifunction devices and printers in addition to their settings. A small office home office is an IT term that refers to home offices, small business offices, and even remote office environments. A multifunction device is a device containing some functional combination of a scanner, printer, copier, and fax capabilities. These devices usually cost less and occupy less space than the individual elements that comprise the device, although multifunction devices cannot match the performance of a dedicated device for each individual element. Let's talk about configuring a printer or a multifunction device. So before you can print to a standard printer or multifunction device, you must have the appropriate print drivers installed that match the specific model of the device. In addition, you also have to ensure you have the correct print driver that works with the correct operating system and operating system version. Now here are some of the standard configuration options for printers or multifunction devices. You have duplex or double-sided printing. And this is a feature that allows the printing of a sheet of paper on both sides automatically. Print devices without this capability can only print on a single side of paper. And this is also known as single-sided printing. Next you have what is called Colat settings. This feature is used when printing two or more copies of a document that has two or more pages. So for example, Example, you have a document that is four pages long and you want to print four copies of this document. If the Colat feature is selected, the document would print pages one, two, three, and four of the first copy of the document before printing off the second copy of the document and so on. This feature is useful for binding, stapling, or punching documents, but it is much slower than uncollated print jobs. And then next we have orientation. So page orientation is the direction in which a document is displayed or printed. The two basic types of page orientation are portrait, which is the long side up or the vertical side and landscape, which is the short side up or the horizontal side. And then we have print quality. This refers to the quality of the hard copy or printout produced by a printer. There are many factors that determine the level of the quality, but overall it has to do with the accuracy of the reproduction of the source material, which is influenced by the quality and type of paper used in addition to the specifications of the printer, such as DPI, which stands for dots per inch, the print head capability, and the quality of the ink and toner being used. Let's talk about device sharing options. So printers and multifunction devices can be shared between two or more computers by using USB, serial connections, or ethernet connections. Serial and USB printer sharing involves utilizing switch boxes that can be manually or automatically switched between devices. But serial and USB are limited by relatively short cable runs and a lack of management capabilities. Most wired printer and multifunction devices are shared by way of using ethernet connections. So here are the basic steps for how to configure a modern printer or multifunction device for shared access across an ethernet connection. First thing you wanna do, you wanna connect the printer or the multifunction device to the network via an ethernet cable, such as the RJ45 cable. You wanna configure the printer or multifunction device to use ethernet. You wanna give the printer a name so it can be located on the network. You wanna specify whether the printer or multifunction device will get an IP address from the DHCP if you need to configure the printer or multifunction device's IP address manually, you need to assign the device an IP address that is not in use by the DHCP. And then you want to record the configuration information. Some printers and multifunction devices might print out this information after the setup process is complete. To print to a network printer or multifunction device, a network printer or multifunction driver may need to be installed instead of the standard print driver. 
Let's talk about Bluetooth. So to print via Bluetooth capabilities on a printer or multifunction device, both the computer or mobile device and the printer slash multifunction device must have Bluetooth transceivers. After enabling Bluetooth on the printer and computer, you must configure both for pairing and pair them before print jobs can be sent. If a computer does not have built-in Bluetooth capabilities, a USB dongle can be added to the device to provide Bluetooth support. Let's talk about 802.11 wireless sharing. So most new printer and multifunction devices do support 802.11 Wi-Fi standards. This configuration process is similar to that used for a wired Ethernet with the added step of identifying the SSID of the wireless network and the encryption key if one is used. After the configuration is complete, all devices on the network with the proper print driver can use the multifunction device. Let's talk about infrastructure versus ad hoc. So a wireless ad hoc network is a decentralized type of wireless network. The network is ad hoc because it does not rely on a pre-existing infrastructure, such as routers in a wired network or access points in a managed wireless network. In ad hoc mode, each device is connected directly to other devices. If you want to use Wi-Fi printers or multifunction devices, but do not use Wi-Fi networking with a wireless router, you need to configure the printer to devices to work in ad hoc mode. Infrastructure mode supports WPA2 encryption, while ad hoc mode supports only WEP encryption, making it unsuitable for secure networking. Let's talk about cloud and remote printing. So cloud printing allows for you to print from any web connected device, routing the print jobs from your computer, smartphone or tablet and sends them to an internet connected printer. Remote printing is a functionality in which a computer can be used with a remote printer. Remote printing lets users use their printer for printing documents saved on the remote computer they are accessing. Similarly, they can use the host computer to print to the remote printer. Cloud and remote printing requires the following. They require a printer or multifunction device that can be accessed from the cloud or remotely via the web and an app that supports remote or cloud printing. The printer settings are loaded into the app and the cloud-based document is downloaded and printed from the mobile device. Let's talk about using public and shared devices. So public cloud printing allows users to submit print jobs via email, web interfacing, mobile apps, or special print drivers. To receive the print job from the printer, the user must provide the credentials needed, such as a retrieval code or an account code. Google Cloud is an example of such service. Google Cloud Print is a Google service that lets users print from any cloud print aware application, such as web, desktop, or mobile on any device in the network cloud to any printer with native support for connecting to cloud print services without Google having to create and maintain printing subsystems for all the hardware combinations of client devices and printers and without users having to install device drivers to the client, but with documents being fully transmitted to Google. AirPrint is a feature in Apple's Mac OS and iOS operating systems for printing via Wi-Fi, either directly to AirPrint compatible printers or to non-compatible shared printers by way of a computer running Microsoft Windows, Linux, or Mac. AirPrint does not require printer-specific drivers. AirPrint uses software called Bonjour, which comes built into Mac and iOS systems. Bonjour finds the AirPrint printer and the document can be sent. Bonjour is available in Windows 8 and 10, and the user with Bonjour installed on a Windows machine can print to an AirPrint enabled printer. Let's talk about maintaining data privacy. So when a document is sent to a computer, a special print file is created by the print spooler. To prevent unauthorized users from opening the print file and extracting information from it, two methods can be used, user authentication and hard drive caching. User authentication matches print jobs to the IP address of the computer or device requesting the print job and can be enabled at the printer itself or by security settings used on Active Directory enabled networks. When user authentication is enabled in the printer, the user must provide the appropriate identification during the print process. 
And finally, let's talk about using hard drive caching. So in computer, spooling is a specialized form of multi-programming for the purpose of copying data between different devices. In contemporary systems, it is usually used for mediating between a computer application and a slow peripheral, such as a printer. Spooling allows programs to, quote, hand off work to be done by the peripheral, then proceed to other tasks or to not begin until input has been transcribed. A dedicated program, or the spooler, maintains an orderly sequence of jobs for the peripheral and feeds it data at its own rate. The most common use of spooling is printing. Documents formatted for printing are stored in the queue at the speed of the computer, then retrieved and printed at the speed of the printer. In Windows, print spool files are stored on the system hard drive at the location C backslash Windows backslash system 32 backslash spool backslash printers. The default location of the print spool files can be changed by selecting the printer multifunction device in devices and printers, opening the print server properties dialog, click advance, click change advanced settings, and then specify a different location. All right. So now in summary, we have just talked about Soho, small office, home office, multifunction devices, printers, and their settings. Now, if you felt like you got something valuable out of this information, please go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, technology G so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the comp Tia 220. 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.